Hi, I'm Dr. Brant Pedersen from Positive Motion Chiropractic. And in this video, we're going to talk about plantar fascial pain, foot pain, and pain into your heel. Um, this video is for you if you have been dealing with that kind of pain and you're frustrated and just ready to get a solution. Because I see a lot of times providers will pigeonhole themselves into just looking at a couple things when they're looking at plantar fascial pain. And a lot of times it doesn't get the response we want. So people will deal with plantar fascial issues over and over and over for months, sometimes years at a time. And we know that keeps them from doing the things that they love. Um, I want to share with you about a patient that came in yesterday that prompted this video. He's a master's, pretty high level competitive tennis player, and he has been having plantar fascial pain now for six months. And he's been to a podiatrist. He has uh, done physical therapy. He's done exercises on his own. He's seen a chiropractor. He's seen an acupuncturist and uh, stayed off of it and taken a heaping, heaping ton of uh, ibuprofen, uh, a leave. And, um, and all of that to no avail. He still is having to lay off his tennis, still is having the foot pain. Uh, he's actually got it on both feet and he's just frustrated. So he came in yesterday, said, doc, um, is, hasn't been a patient. He said, Hey, someone told me to come in here. You guys look at stuff differently. So what would you do that some of these other people of any of these other people haven't done? And why do you think you can get a benefit to it? So I listened to him and, um, I want to share with you what we go through and teach people about their feet and why I think I'm going to be able to help him. So first off, what is plantar fasciitis and what's the plantar fascia? So um, your calf and your foot, your foot has 25% of the bones of your body uh, are located in your feet and ankle. And so it's really important that they're all moving good um, whenever we're going to try and improve this condition. Um, also your plantar fascia runs from your calcaneus here up into your toes and it acts kind of as a shock absorber. Um, fascia is a non-contractile um, connective tissue. Uh, this book by Thomas Myers called Anatomy Trains, it's fantastic. And um, it goes into showing kind of about the plantar fascia here, kind of where it runs. Here's an actual picture of it and a, a schematic or drawing of it. Um, you know, your, this is a great uh, image here where they talk about how the plantar fascia and where it attaches into that calcaneus uh, can actually kind of pull when you have tension in that uh, um, tension, increased tension over time in that plantar fascia. Uh, it can create increased tension there at the kind of saran wrap over the bone, which is called your periosteum, uh, creating a space. And over time, that space fills in with bone. That's how you get uh, heel spurs. And... Um, Another thing I wanted to show you is that fascia runs in a continuum. So it doesn't start and stop like muscles. There's certain, um, that's what this whole book is about, is there's certain spots or certain layers where the fascia runs in a continuum. In your superficial back line, uh, it runs from the front of your forehead all the way down the back of your neck and spine into your hamstrings. Uh, your calf muscles and then ends in your plantar fascia. So those of you who have plantar fascial problems and are doing stretches to help that, maybe calf or hamstring stretches, you can understand why people would be saying to do that when you've got foot problems. So great resource um, for clinicians more, but good to know about. Um, so that anatomy, plantar fasciitis, itis, any itis in the body, gastritis, uh, blepharitis, uh, yeah on and on. Itis means inflammation or swelling of. So, uh, and it just tells us, hey, the tissue is inflamed. But the real question is, why is it inflamed? And how do we get a reduction in that swelling so that you can get back to having pain-free functional life? Um, so some things that I went over with him. First off, he was doing tons of stretching. Everyone had been giving him stretching, stretching, stretching. Stretching is important when muscles are tight in that uh, posterior chain. It's important to stretch them. But you know, he looked like he had pretty good flexibility. He was stretching like 20 or 30 minutes a day. He really wants to get over this, get back out on the tennis court. But I asked him, are you doing any strengthening exercises? And he looked at me like, I'm doing general strength training, but not for this. So no one had given him any strengthening exercises. And the thing is muscles work as synergists and antagonists to each other. If you've got muscles that are weak, 
other muscles are going to take over, other tissues are going to take over and be extra tight and deal with that tension to create stability. So one of the things we talked to them about is um, this. It's a dynamometer we use, uh, or a strain gauge, to check the strength of his toes. Um, if we don't look to the strength of the toes, what we see in the medical literature is that poor toe flexor strength is correlated with having uh, plantar fascial problems and chronic plantar fascial problems. By looking at that, we're able to assess and see if someone has weakness in their toe flexors, and if they do, give them a strengthening regime for that, um, which is important to have the person strengthen the toes from a position of lengthening of those toes. We get four times the strength um, gains when we start from a lengthened position at those toe flexors than if we don't, uh, but something important to look at. Also, we talked about um, eccentric strength of his calf muscles, gastroc and soleus. The reason I'm mentioning all of this is we're in Northern California. We help patients. If you're in this area or traveling through Northern California, um, we'd love to be able to assess you and help you out, get over your plantar fascial problems. The reason I'm talking about this is that if you're in an area other than that, in, this, in the United States or around the world, and you're having plantar fascial problems, just know that the things we're going over this video should be things that your providers are looking at. If they're not, you need to get to providers that are looking at those things or somehow find a resource to help with that. But if you're in our area or traveling here, we'd, we'd love to help you out. Okay, um, eccentric control. So it's important to understand in your muscles, uh, there is concentric contraction, meaning the muscle is contracting as it's shortening. There's also eccentric uh, contraction, which is contracting the muscle as it lengthens. And there's eccentric control. The vast majority of sports injuries happen from poor eccentric control, like I was going to set down a cup, right? So in his case, he said that the his plantar fascial problems really started to come on when he was started playing more doubles and he was up at the net more, jumping more, being more dynamic that way. And so if you have really strong calves, concentrically, um, you'd be able to jump really high and good. But when you come to land, you'll notice that the distance here of the calf to the calcaneus or the where your calf muscles would be has to lengthen. Uh, has to sh has to lengthen, and what that is is lengthening under control. So if you don't have good eccentric strength when you go to land from a jump, you're gonna not be able to slow this as quickly, which means that you're gonna land harder and flatter on your feet. When that happens, it'll put repeated load into your plantar fascia, and uh, that can cause problems. So in his case, assessing the eccentric strength and control of his calf muscles are vital in getting him fixed, and no one had looked at that. Some other things, in six months he hadn't had any imaging, and so I said, wow, given where you have your pain, especially the stuff coming off of the heel, it's very important that we get some x-rays to see if you have heel spurs or other things that can give us a better prognosis of what it's going to take to get you better and how long it's going to take. Um, I wouldn't get x-rays on someone if they'd had plantar fascial problems for two weeks or a month. We're getting close. but. If someone's got it for six months, my God, no one's taken imaging, just get the x-rays. So we're getting x-rays on him. Also, he had orthotics, and orthotics, it's a whole nother topic. Uh, there's many different ways to look at orthotics, but he came in with three pairs of orthotics, two from his podiatrist, like 700 bucks a piece, and one that were Dr. Scholl's. The Dr. Scholl's were not going to be helping him from what I could see, but the ones from his podiatrist, they were pretty good. Um, just know that if you have plantar fascia problems and you haven't looked into orthotics and had someone look into making you a professional set uh, that's customized to you, my gosh, sometimes it's a game changer and, and a deal killer if you don't do it. Other things we looked at was, um, has he had uh, any Graston? And Graston is a soft tissue uh, mobilization technique where we utilize tools to break down adhesions that form in the fascia. Uh, the plantar fascia being a great example, and sometimes we get amazing results from stubborn, plant, stubborn plantar fasciitis by getting in and working with the Graston tools uh, over a few sessions. Also lifestyle stuff. Here in the Silicon Valley, tons of people are saying sitting is evil, so we're going to do standing desks, standing workstations. And I got to tell you, if, if you have not, uh, if you'd been sitting you know, 40, 50, 60 hours a week for work, and then you switch to standing 40 or 50 or 60 hours, 
my gosh, it's gonna put some different loads on your feet and on your plantar fascia, really making it important that you know how to stand properly, but also that you um, have good support in your shoes and maybe with orthotics, that kind of thing. So I asked him if he'd done any of that recently. Also looking at an inflammatory index, knowing how to reduce inflammation naturally. He was taking tons of, of uh, ibuprofen uh, to reduce inflammation, but omega-3s, most importantly EPA, not taking a single capsule from Costco omega-3 fish oil, um, but taking a clinical dose of omega-3s, um, EPA being the most important. And then uh, things like boswellia, turmeric, curcumin, uh, um, ginger, those are natural herbal anti-inflammatories. So making sure you're taking a good load of that, especially if you're an athlete and you're really putting a lot of stress into your body, you need a way to naturally um, reduce that inflammation. And then we lastly talked about cold laser. Cold laser is something that's used a lot on professional Olympic athletes to reduce inflammation, to speed up the rate of healing, and to help with pain. Um, it's not necessary to heal things, but sometimes it can get us over that hump with a chronic plantar fasciitis and get people feeling better quicker. Also looking at shoes. And a lot of times uh, what we notice, there's a lot going on with shoes. Uh, should we have zero drop or negative drop or uh, pronation controlled shoes or should we do barefoot running? I mean, God, that's a whole nother lecture upon lecture. Um, that being said, what we really notice is important is a shoe that is long enough, this is gonna seem way too simple, but long enough and wide enough. Most people have too narrow of a shoe in their toe box and that can lead to um, certain muscles turning off, putting pressure in certain areas. What we recommend is someone take their um, barefoot stand on a piece of paper and trace around their foot and then take whatever inserts in their shoe and set it on top of that tracing and none of that tracing of where their foot was should be outside of that um, of their shoe insert. Uh, if it is, it means your foot is being compressed in your transverse metatarsal arch causing problems. So hopefully this has given you some ideas if you're struggling with trying to find a solution to plantar fasciitis um, of things that should be looked at by professionals that are helping you out. Um, we'd love it if you'd comment below. Let us know questions you have that we can put on other videos um, or comments that you have. We love hearing that. And um, I hope that you will find a solution to your foot pain and that you will be able to get back to doing what you love. If we can help facilitate that here at Positive Motion, um, we're happy to do that and would love the opportunity. Um, but wherever you're at, I hope you find a resolution and get back to doing what you love.